people are still approaching pitching and selling concepts the same way. And one of the big things that I do is that I'm trying to bring authenticity into that room. People don't believe that who they are is enough to sell. Who are you to say that yourself is enough to sell that work? That just hurts you because the armor, the disguise that we wear, that crap that we put on ourselves to, to say, well, this is a better version of myself. That's really just a form of lying. You have to present like you. You just have to learn how. Welcome to Business Leaders with Soul, a podcast showcasing the change makers and innovators of our times who are ushering in a new age of conscious business. They're authentic, they're original, and their message connects with the people they're here to serve. Be inspired by these futurists and make the difference that you, too, came here to make. And now, here's your host, Lee Aldridge. Hi, everybody. I'm Lee Aldridge with Soul Story Creative, where we don't tell you who to be. We show the world who you are. And with us today to share his thoughts on the future of conscious business and what that means to him is Ben Levy, leading change in life and business. Now, Ben Levy is the bald-headed brainchild behind Sell It Great. He's a creative director and copywriter who helps creatives sell their idea as brilliantly as the inspired idea itself, getting the buy-in you need, whether coaching individuals, teams, or executives to become more persuasive, Ben guides you in making your message more concise and compelling. Your communication is clearer and more entertaining. Ben's clients are even able to remain confident in the face of the unexpected. Distilled from over 15 years creating and selling award-winning ideas, Ben's Sell It Great approach has benefited clients who work at agencies big and small. Now it's available to anyone who is ready to up their presentation game. Now Ben's written one book he will not admit to, and two that he will. And he once managed to fail a salsa class. Ben, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here today. This is just going to be a blast. How did you get? Thank you. Thank you for being here. I'll tell you, the advertising industry, that, that's, <laughs> a, that's a big one. That's frothy, you know? How in the world did you get where you are? What did it take? Um, a lot of it took self-preservation in the literal sense. <laughs> I had, <laughs> I, I was not, I am not a natural presenter. And so early in my career, I watched my ideas die, not because mm. they were bad, but because I did not know how to make them sound good. Yeah. And then I got a little better at that, at making them sound good, but suddenly I was being asked to be in the room every time. And that sounds great, except that I also need to do other things like eat lunch or pee or occasionally do my own work or see my family or sleep. <laughs> yeah. It's like, so, so that's out of the so, industry, right? In a creative it is, house. It, it is, it is, but it, it, it got to the point it was interrupt advertising was interrupting advertising. Right? Like the pitching I was doing was interrupting the, the ideas I was supposed to be coming up with so that I could pitch uh, those as well. And I, I got so overwhelmed that out of self-preservation, out of self-defense, I created a boot camp for some other folks in the agency where I was working at the time and taught them everything I could think of about what it was I did when I was in the room pitching and selling ideas. And it worked out pretty well. So from that I actually stepped, took half a step outside of advertising, and now I'm consulting creatives and agencies on how to do the stuff that I was doing. Because yeah, it took me gonna... five or six years to figure all that out, and that's way too late. That's unnecessary. <laughs> I can teach it to well, somebody else. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're here now. I mean, it is definitely needed, um, you know, to, to spread your, your wisdom at that um, young in your career like that was really something to step into. And now you can see where it's come. 
Um, you know, what? what is your feeling on the advertising in the industry today? What challenges are we facing? I think that the industry is moving. It's facing a couple of challenges, honestly. I think one of them is just that it's moving too fast. It, there's There's ageism that exists in advertising. And you have one good idea, and all of a sudden you go from a junior to a creative director. And you're not prepared to do the other half of this work. You're not prepared to step into a room with people who've spent 20, 30 years getting to their positions and to hold your own and present your work in a way that is giving you the greatest chance of success. My eventual goal, my, my motivating factor behind Sell It Great is to raise the entire industry up. I want all of the work that we see, all the things that interrupt our shows, our, our streams, our daily commutes, I want that to be better than it is right now. And I would argue that one of the big reasons why it isn't is because we're not better as an industry at presenting that work, as presenting those ideas. So I believe that if everyone presented better, you would be less frustrated by the things interrupting your TV show. That's right. With with And wanting to fast forward through everything, it's not very entertaining, not much of it. But, you know, you're in this creative industry and with all of this, these gaps, you know, in the training and just getting the skill set for, for someone starting out or maybe they've been there for 10 years, it's still very daunting to walk into a room like that with your account people and your creative director standing there and being able to hold your own, much less being creative. Like, isn't it kind of a downward spiral, you know, where people are, they're in the creative business where you need to be inspired and come up with great ideas, but you're bogged. This just sounds yeah. like such a bog. It, it is. You, you put all of that energy into the work. And then because your whole career has been around creating that work, you don't know what to do when you walk into the room with it. Mm. You're, you're great up until that point. You are among one of the masters on the planet at coming up with ideas, at putting the words to it, putting the images behind it. But now express that to somebody else, not as a finished product, because you're not at that stage yet. Express it as a concept and make them fall in love with it. Make them take a risk. Make them spend more money than they planned to on it. That is a huge ask. And without training, what happens is we default to a made-up concept of who the person doing that should be. I've literally run training sessions where someone has said to me, I've never done this before. I was just trying to be like Don Draper. Oh, gosh. That's a really sad statement. Don Draper is a wonderful character, but he's a character. He has a script. There's a, there's a backing track and, <laughs> and they have to buy it at the end because he's the show. So you should not pattern Don Draper. None that, that doesn't even have anything to do with the fact that this is a parody of, in a sense of how advertising used to be in the forties and fifties. I think we've moved on a little bit since then. Oh how yeah. People buy and sell has changed. In a big way. I mean, that was what era, that was just eons away, the way advertising. It was iconic, right? But it, but it hasn't changed much. Realistically, the way that oh. so many people approach it right now has not changed much. Maybe it's on a screen instead of on, on cardstock, and maybe you didn't have to spray mount it before the meeting. Maybe, maybe you just got to assemble it in InDesign. But people are still approaching pitching and selling concepts the same way. And one of the big things that I do on a, on a macro level is that I'm trying to bring authenticity into that room. Yeah. So often we, we put on our business hat, our business persona, and, and people don't believe that who they are is enough to sell. Yeah. So, you know, and, and you could be walking into a room where it's billions of dollars with a B on the table. At the very least, mm -hmm. you're walking into a room with concepts that people have spent hours and days and weeks on. Who are you to say that yourself is enough to sell that work? So I understand the inclination and I had that inclination when I was, was newer, but, yeah. but that just hurts you because that 
the the armor, the disguise that we wear, that crap that we put on ourselves to to say, well, this is a better version of myself. That's really just a form of lying. Yeah. And that's that's what I feel we are seeing the big difference. And maybe it was Seth Godin with permission marketing and sales, right? Maybe that was the birth and the death of that era. But I don't want to be sold to. I want right. to make a, an informed, uh, respectful decision based on what I know is true for me. And I, I believe humanity has evolved, but we're still stuck. And, and it's people like you and me that are, that are urging all of us to just show up in your own unique expression. And it is enough. And then you can have the skill sets. You can learn the skill sets. So it sounds like you're really teaching people how to not sell on somebody, but, but to persuade them, you know, the persuasion you talk about. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> persuaded. Great. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue in the same way, but I think in, in a lot of ways it, it's more accurate. Right. I think particularly in advertising, sort of silly. We have this knee jerk reaction to the thought of selling. We hate mm -hmm. it. It feels gross. We don't want to sell. As, it feels sleazy. Advertisers. It does feel sleazy and it feels like you have to force something on somebody. It feels manipulative. And honestly, I went back to the dictionary for this one. So the definition of, of manipulate is to control or influence unfairly or unscrupulously. You are literally getting people to do things that is, is in your best interest, not theirs. Persuasion though, that's defined as providing a sound reason for someone to do something. And that's, I think, the big difference here is that people are afraid to sell because they're afraid that they're going to be manipulative. Where what you're really trying to do is to show your client what's in their best interest. So many agencies will come to the table with three ideas. And we all say the same thing. These are all great. We'd be happy to run any of them. You know you know one of those is better than the others. It's also, in most cases, going to be the one that is least familiar, the most unique, something the client's never seen before. Yeah. You need to persuade them why that's the best choice. Oh. You can't ram it down their throat. You can't twist their arm into it. But if you leave it up to the client, you are letting them harm their own business and their own brand because you didn't persuade them. You did not provide a sound reason for them to make the choice that you as the expert, you as the agency know is best. Yeah. And the, the rookie that comes in, that's been there for 18 months and is, you know, has maybe some natural innate abilities to, to have this persuasive um, expression about them, then they get promoted. And now like you, they're doing all the things or, or maybe they're a creative director. And, and they just simply don't know what they don't know. That's right. There's so little, not just training, but conversation around this in the industry mm. that I have seen seasoned executives make the same kinds of missteps that, that a junior will. Mm. Because if you only learn by doing, if you only learn through experience, then over the years, you will amass a lot of knowledge and a lot of good techniques, but you're also going to amass a lot of blind spots. To your point, you don't know what you don't know. And because this isn't taught as a discrete skill in advertising, I have run into people who've owned their own business, who bootstrapped it from when it was you know, them alone in their bedroom to now a 50, 60 person agency who have missed what to me are basic concepts of pitching and presenting simply because there was no one to lay this out for them and show them what's out there. So they've only learned what they tried, what they realized worked, and what they were able to repeat. But there'll but be huge gaps evolving. in their game. They, they're, not evolving, they're not evolving evenly, right? They may evolve through one thing. You might have somebody who, who learns, oh, when I engage my audience, they respond better and I sell more work. So now they're telling too many jokes because they're trying to build that engagement. Now they're 
talking too loudly because they think that's how they keep people awake. They're growing, but they're not realizing there's other things they could be doing. Don't just tell jokes, ask questions. Instead of yelling at them, try whispering. They'll actually lean in. So there's there's all of these sorts of things that they have missed because they've never had a chance to be educated on it. They've only had the experience. Right. Or just the content, like make good messaging, get clear on your message. You know, we harp about authenticity and a clear message here all the time. That's right. um, yeah. And, you know, I just think that the whole industry is changing. You know, we've got the a lot of people without the scruples forcing information that we don't want to see. We don't even care about it. It's the age of infobesity. So, gosh, I commend you for being so brave and keeping on the uh, the mission of education and fun. I mean, that's what I love about you. You are so much fun and you bring such a feeling of possibility and that you instill that in me. You instill the confidence and the empowerment and the inspiration. So I just love that. Well, what what's the opportunity that that you see for business leaders today? We're in we're in a different world. We got the old Zoomer going on now. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, I too like digital. I, I want I want Hey Zoomer to be the new Hey Boomer. That's a good. I'm gonna figure that out where to use that. That is a good one. Hey Zoomer, you can Thanks, have Zoomer. that. Well, I don't know. We'll have to package that one. <laughs> I think the opportunity is actually to build more relationships, and and most people are feeling the effects of separation, are feeling the barrier that exists when you have to sell through a screen, but it's also opportunity. Before the world ended and we had to recreate it, I had a client I was working with who had a very difficult schedule. We had to get a whole bunch of their their team, high-ranking members in a room at the same time, and doing that is like herding cats. It took about a week, I think, for account to get them all together and say, okay, here are the dates. And I had to say, apologies, guys. I'm not telling you to change the meeting. I'm just telling you I can't be there. I have a conflict. The client actually came back and said, what's his availability? We'll match it. And the reason they did that is because the relationship I had built with them through pitching and presenting was enough that they enjoyed being in the room with me. It was an enjoyable experience to talk about their problems, their work, how we were going to try and solve them. And they were actually going to change their schedules and prioritize having somebody that they wanted to talk to in the room. I didn't have any special knowledge that no one else had, but they wanted to talk to me. That's still true today. You think about Zoom fatigue. You think about how draining it can be to smile into a camera that never blinks for hours on end every day. Oh, my gosh. That's a great way to put it. If you are the person that is actually a breath of fresh air during that experience, mm -hmm. if you are the individual that they look forward to meeting after the two hours that they have to stare and pretend not to fall asleep. That is huge. They are going to keep giving you work if only for their own sanity. Yeah. And they are going to trust you because you are bringing humanity and joy to their life. You are bringing authenticity. Yeah. And that's the conscious, that's the conscious business. I mean, you're being right. conscious, you know, and you're, you're thinking of the other the audience, you know, it's about entertaining and engaging your audience. It always has been. I don't care if you were selling a vacuum cleaner on my front door 50, 60 years ago, or you're on a Zoom and you're the keynote for a big summit and everything in between. I mean, translating that through digital, making a connection in a digital world is quite an art form. And that's why the, the Don Draper approach is so damaging, because there are so many more tools you have at your disposal. I use a hack on Zoom. Instead of slides, I change my virtual background with every visual when I'm talking to people. So you don't see a small thumbnail of my head. I'm in front of you, whether you want me to be or not. And I can walk in front of my information that's, that's in the background if I want the focus to be on me instead of that. So now I'm building a relationship with my audience over Zoom in a way that very few people do because they hide behind their slides and all that they're represented by is a small thumbnail. 
Oh, yeah, that's much, much easier. <laughs> I'm like, and I have my script right here, and nobody can really <laughs> see it because I'm just a thumbnail, and I don't have to really, really, really sell it great. You know, I just get to read my already fixed up great script. I spend tons of time on it, but I'm hiding behind that share screen, man. I know it. Right. And yeah. and that that is an element of relationship that you could be exercising that you're not. There's you look at at what people do on streaming services like Twitch. Look at how people create their own branded entertainment on YouTube. It's not new to communicate with people through a screen. But we're trying to, in many cases, force the experience we used to have into the new paradigm. And, yeah. and that's why it isn't working. I'll, I'll give you one example of this, and then I promise I'll get off the soapbox. They, in the early days of radio, they would bring singers and bands into the station, and they would perform. They used to show up wearing tuxedos. Why? No one can see you on radio. Well, because they, that's what they wore when they were at Carnegie Hall. So that's what we're doing now. There are so many agencies that are attempting to present in the tuxedo. And all you're doing is creating a needless barrier between yourself and your audience. Use this, this medium to its own advantage. So my slides are a tuxedo? <laughs> yes. Yes. Your slides are a tuxedo. I said it here Dang first. It. Your slides are a tuxedo and very rarely... Are you going to that kind of party? That's the issue. That's the issue right there. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, I think back, I have a series of of uh, branding and marketing webinars that, that I'll be sharing again. I, I uh, used to share them quite a bit. But one of the biggest feedback comments, you know what it was? What well, can it? we see your face more, Lee? You're so engaging. <laughs> You see? But then I've got to memorize things, right? So do we? Well, do we have to a, memorize? How do we do no, it? I don't, don't know. Memorize. We just need don't to. Memorize. Don't memorize. Don't memorize. Don't read you. slides. Don't memorize. Don't read slides. Don't memorize. You want to you wanna know. You want to know your points, and then you can speak to them naturally. Well, and that, that goes back to the authenticity. If you know your content, right. if you know who you are, what you stand for, and what the hell you're doing up there, then you're going to give a good talk. It's not going right. to be the talk you planned, and it's not going to be the talk you wish you gave, but it will be just the right talk, won't it? Absolutely. It could be even better than what you had planned. Yeah, I think you and I were talking a little earlier about how one went really bad for you and you were torn up inside and they ended up calling you back to be their full time guy or something. <laughs> that was I mean, that's the difference of just perception versus reality. Right? You you cannot trust your brain sometimes. And that's another thing that makes actual training versus experience helpful, because mm -hmm. you'll walk away from a room believing that one thing happened a certain way. And other people will walk away believing the exact opposite. And so when you find yourself in a situation that you don't expect, when you find yourself in a situation you think is going south, having training, having a framework to fall back on and say, mm -hmm. even if I don't feel it, even if I don't see how it works, I know these are the steps I'm supposed to move through. In my experience, that means you come out the other side okay. Mm-hmm. That's right. Instead of falling on your face, which is all of our worst nightmare when it yeah. comes to presentation and, you know, we'll we'll get the gumption. We'll go do it. But to do it right and to do it persuasively is is a skill that can be learned. And if I get fouled up, if somebody asks a question or gets mad at me, God forbid, you know, I'll have a barometer, some, something to grab hold of to come back to center, answer the question, answer whatever it is, and and do what I need to do to be a professional. That's right. And questions are great. It's the it's one of the silliest things in the world that we fear questions. We yeah. do. I don't know where that idea came from. I used to, for sure. So there are some days I still have that knee-jerk reaction. But questions are your best friend. Yeah. It's it's a way for you to check in with the audience. 
It is. And it, it's a way for me to come back and help them understand, like you were saying, to bring them around to the idea. You know, don't be afraid of the question. It's another opportunity that you get to bring them around to your favorite of the three ideas because it's the favorite because you know it's what's best for them as the creative. But that creative without the skill is going to be like, well, which one do you like? I, I truly believed when I started out that my goal was to say nothing. I believed that the best idea, it was a meritocracy. I showed them three. Whatever was truly the best idea was going to be the one they picked because that's how you knew it was the best idea. And that was what I believed oh. for years. And then the notes I was getting from my creative directors would be, you could be a little more excited about the work. So I talked louder because I thought that's what that meant. <laughs> oh, I must have to talk louder so they know I'm excited about these. But I was actively trying to keep my voice out of the conversation. To be neutral. Yep. I mean, I was, I was like the security guard at the Louvre. Like, I would not. I'm just standing here. Please take your time. Tell me what you think. <laughs> when I tell you I was not a natural presenter, this is this is where I started from. Oh my goodness, that's like that's like my client who was who took a, a work trip and it was in Guatemala and she had been running for five days working her fair trade apparel company and with the the makers down there, and it was at the end and her photographer that we sent with her did a video and and she sent it to and she's like. Yeah, we've had a great trip. Yeah, we got beautiful colors for the fabrics you can see back here. And she's about to fall out of the chair. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, we'll just uh, let it go at that. We are just silly, aren't we? I'm just, I'm just another bozo on the bus at the end of the day. You know, I, I need to learn from people like you. <laughs> no, but that's that's important. That that personality is honest. I have so many people who say, I need your help. I'm an introvert. Well, you do need my help, but it's not because you're an introvert. It's because you don't believe that your personality is enough as it is. Mm -hmm. I am, I am a bombastic cartoonish presenter. I'm very dramatic. I aim for high highs and low lows. Yeah, if you don't That's, like the heat, then sit in the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> right. The first three rows are splash zone. No, I try not to do that. But, but, but there are, I've worked with people. Some of my best clients, most successful clients are, are introverted when they present. They have a very narrow range compared to mine. And what's so important about it is you have to use that entire range, but do not exceed it. If you are an introverted person, and your happiness only ever hits a four in terms of how you express it. If you try to go to six, you're going to look ridiculous. You're going to look like you're making it up. And the audience is going to know whether it's your creative director or your client. And they're going to start to wonder what is going on. I don't really believe they're excited about this work. I feel like they're yeah. having to force themselves. They're going to be dis distracted by it. That's right. So you, that's where this authenticity comes from, right? We have all this crap that we mistakenly believe. We think, well, I have to work. I have to, to present like this person because look at the success they've had. No, no, you have to present like you. You just have to learn how. You have to, you have to emerge that, you know, and, and yes. get in touch with it. Yes. Right? If you're the bozo on the bus, you can still, you still have natural sincerity. You mm -hmm. still have curiosity. You still have the full range of emotions that you bring, but they have to be your emotions. You can't pretend to bring somebody else's into that room. They're going to feel it. It's going to be awkward for you. It's going to be awkward for them, and they will start second-guessing what you're telling them. Yeah, you cannot be a madman or a mad woman if you're not. No. You know? And besides, and a lot of the times you shouldn't be that. Don you Draper could. in that <laughs> era. Yeah. Besides yeah. what? Besides, I feel like a lot of times you shouldn't be that, even if you could. Not, uh, oh, not, not the best. We've already, the best we've morality already established example. that one. Yeah, we established that. I feel like those stories, fact. most of those stories, didn't end well. No, they did not. They did not. And I think you know, for some of us that are old enough, that's what we remember. You know, and the crazy, wild things, and 
you know, I, I'm curious, what does having a soulful message in your business mean? And how does it, you know, drive you, your decisions? I think for me that that soulfulness is linked to that sense of authenticity. And I think the hardest part of being yourself is exposure, that vulnerability. And having a business means you're now putting yourself out there. You're, you're giving yourself an even broader area in which you can be exposed and vulnerable. And that's tough. But for me, once you make your peace with that, once you become more comfortable with that idea, I don't know that I'm all the way there yet, but once you become more comfortable with that idea, it's pretty easy to start making the decisions that are right for you and your company. Mm -hmm. right? It's the same thing that we were just talking about. If you try to be somebody else's business and you try to guess why they're making their decisions and duplicate those because that's what feels right, it doesn't feel right. No. It's you pretending that, that this is the right answer. You're if acting. you are, that's right. If you are authentic, then you know where you need to go next. It might scare you. It might be uncomfortable, but you know where you need to go. And nobody's expecting you to show up as George Clooney or Meryl Streep anyway. You know, it's a hard sell we... getting me to show up as Meryl Streep. Yeah, that would be also rough. George, also George Clooney. No. But my wife would be excited if we could work that out. <laughs> message her. But he's not bald. So he's, nope. he doesn't have anything on you. Um, okay. <laughs> this has been fantastic. You're real, you're authentic. And I'm just, I just love this. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Sellitgreat.com is the website. I am posting almost every day or as near as I can make it on LinkedIn at Sellitgreat. So I would say chase me down at either of those places. I have an opportunity on either one for you to sign up for a free half hour chat. We can talk about your business. We can talk about you. We can talk about my five ingredient guacamole recipe that has been a hit with the kids and it didn't work with the salsa it didn't work with the salsa dancing but it goes wonderfully with the salsa dip yes yes exactly no sell it great.com and on linkedin sell it great we can find you and those will be in your show notes for any for our listeners who want to um go take a look at that page through soulstorycreative.com I'm going to close this with a great quote I heard you say. Oh, God. It's not the best idea that wins. It's the most persuasive argument. True story. That's, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and persuasive, persuasive, as you've taught us today, is a very good thing. Thank you so much, Ben. This has been Thank fabulous. You. Always a pleasure to chat with you, Lee. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Business Leaders with Soul. We hope you enjoyed this discussion into the mind of one of today's authentic thought leaders. We'll be back with another powerful perspective in the next podcast, so be sure to subscribe to get notifications and please share with others. You can connect with us by following Soul Story Creative on LinkedIn or by visiting soulstorycreative.com, where we don't tell you who to be, we show the world who you are. We look forward to seeing you next time.